back live, we will reconvene our meeting. Feels like we're flying through it, but we started early. I looked at that clock and I said, really? We started at 5.30. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, time it's changes. Rough, it? I it's worked like out here. It changes. Oh, uh, you saw him. Saw him, but not much. Huh. <laughs> we used to start at 7. For the most part. We moved it up to 6.30. I got to recruit, but I don't remember the side was on these five thirty. Did I sleep when I what? Yeah, yeah, it was five thirty today. Uh well we talked about it a little bit at that last one. That we was gonna do it. <laughs> I was surprised. I think um I think we approved it on the, the meeting. We did Shannon was out. Yeah. yeah. So that he said it got uh, up, approved the meeting that I missed. That that's what was going. On. I know we talked about making sure we're here early for yeah. so this one. Danny, you ready? Okay, I'll let you lead us. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to round two of the <laughs> council meeting for this evening. Um, thank you for taking some extra time tonight. We thought we would do visioning a little bit different this year. Um, and for those of you who are still new to the board, we've been doing a, a little bit different every year, trying to figure out what works best for everyone between work schedules, um, workload, how much time to invest in this activity. So this evening, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about um, uh, the visioning process itself, where we hope to be, the purpose of all this. Um, and I passed out before you before you got here this afternoon uh, a calendar for budget events coming up, which we'll go over in just a moment. Sue's going to go over a quick financial update just to give you a status of where we stand as of February 28th. Um, and then we'll go over the American Rescue Plan Act funding and the categories that we discussed last fall and where that stands in the next steps. And then I thought we'd wrap up with some permitting updates. Um, we've got Mike here to go over a few projects that I know I get questions about when I go to the chamber events and things like that. So I thought it'd be good for everyone to just be brought up to speed. Um, <clears throat> and so without further ado, we'll just go ahead and jump in. Um, and the first thing that I wanna mention is that visioning is really an opportunity for us to talk um, a little bit more informally. Um, obviously tonight we're still set up in the normal format, but in the morning we'll be set up a little bit more workshop style. Um, we do have an agenda. We're not married to that agenda. It can change. Things can be modified. Uh, we have lunch tomorrow at 11 scheduled, which is really the only hard deadline we have, if you will. Um, we will be giving you some updates on where we where things are this year, and then we'll talk about um, what we're looking at for the upcoming year um, in terms of um, what we've identified as, at the staff level for project, or excuse me, capital needs. And then we also have time set aside for just brainstorming and open discussion. Uh, that it's time for you all to to do just that. Give us your ideas, ask questions, uh, anything that, that that's been burning in your in your mind that you want to get out. So again, tonight we're starting our visioning process. Um, the April thirteenth is uh, the dead is when we will be presenting to you any applications that we receive for the American Rescue Plan Act funding. That is the hundred thousand dollars that was earmarked last fall for nonprofits. I'll get into that those specifics in a moment, but that's the date that we will be presenting those to you. On April 27th of this year, you will be hearing from the various nonprofits that you typically see, uh, the Partnership for Economic Development, AGHC, uh, Small Start, any of those folks who are gonna be requesting funding. Uh, on May 11th, we'll be presenting the budget message and full budget presentation that, that you saw last year. Um, we do have tentatively scheduled on May 15th, which is a Monday, 
uh, a work session if council desires that extra time we've got it already uh, plugged in we don't need to do that but it is there if council would like to have that extra time on may 25th we want to specifically talk about the capital improvement plan um, and the status of those projects what we want to look at moving forward on june 8th we're looking to have your public hearing um, and then adopt the budget if council is in, in a position to do that at that point we do have another meeting scheduled in June, should we need it. And then, of course, July 1st is the deadline for the budget adoption, which is a statutory requirement. Um, there's a little bit more detailed calendar that I've provided to, to staff that includes some internal dates that are, again, statutorily driven in terms of departmental and capital needs. Um, but we've worked those, those due dates ahead of where they are required per the statutes. So I'm going to hand it over to Sue for just a moment to give you an, uh, an update on finances as of the end of the month, February, um, and then any any questions you might have for that. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the revaluation that we just uh, are occurring in the process of going through. So Sue, I'm going to hand it over to you. No, don't worry about it. Okay. Um... I've been saying this all year. We're in really good shape. We're still in very good shape. Um, the um, your budget for the year before that budget amendment was five five million six hundred seventeen thousand five hundred and ten dollars. Our total expenditures through February twenty eighth were four million one zero seven one zero one, which is seventy three percent of your budget. Um, once we made the budget amendment, it's 71% of your budget, which is exactly where you expect to be at the end of February. Um, you hope to be at the end of March, either 75% or lower. Um, and then your revenues are, at, we're at $5,094,823, which was 90% of your budget. So that means your revenues are coming in stronger than you than we expected, which is always a good thing. Um, we have several funds with the town, um, which you don't always hear about. Um, two <laughs> capital project funds, I'm sorry, two capital reserve funds, one for town hall and one for the park for a, a total of 425,000. Um, your capital project fund for the shelter um, reservation uh, restroom building is still open. Um, the um, of the five hundred thousand dollar budget, we we have currently spent four hundred eighty six thousand. Um, now that that means we've not posted that check that you guys were talking about earlier. So um, of what you approved as a budget, this is separate from the contract. If you pay that check, you'll have just over six thousand dollars remaining in that project. And I think there might be a few little incidentals that'll get charged against that. Um, your fines and forfeitures fund is at $8,020. That's money that, again, the, the state and the um, general accounting standard board required <laughs> that we set up a separate fund for any penalties that get paid. Um, this mostly represents tax penalty. Um, and then we have to pay that to the school board. And then right now, um, because as we earn or wash the ARPA money, um, we are moving it um, into our jet, into our um, fund balance. So you currently have a million three forty nine eight thirty six um, of funds that have not been spent, more or less. I mean, it's not, you've not spent any of it, but it's washed. <coughs> um, revenue replaced is the term. So um, fund balance analysis, the most important thing, I mean, it's all the same categories. We, re we visit every quarter. The most important thing is that your total uncommitted fund balance is just over $3 million. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Sue? Okay. One quick one is the capital reserves for the town park or the town hall and the park is that 50 50? Essentially, it's very close, very close. Okay. 
All right, let me uh, just take another moment to give an update on, is that TV working or is it? No. I'm sorry. Um, the We've talked a little bit about the tax, but well, we've talked a lot about the tax revaluation this year and that work is complete at the county level. And as the as the county um, completes projections, we, we, we see those about once a month. We saw our first ones early in February, uh, which I sent to you, which showed the real property increase about 51%. The following week, we received these amended numbers, um, which brought the total increase to 44.98%. So still a, a significant increase, just not as high as it as it was the, the week prior. So these will continue to be refined as we get closer and closer to the budget presentation, as is the normal case um, each year when we're preparing the budget. Uh, these values will be effective as part of the 2023 billing cycle, which those bills will go out uh, late summer this year. So far, again, this is as of, as of February 28th, there have been 132 appeals uh, for property in Mills River. 72 of those have been completed, which represents roughly a $645,000 loss in tax revenue. Um, <clears throat> that loss on paper, of course, we haven't seen the final numbers yet. There are still 60 appeals pending. Hold oh, um, up just a second. Yes. Explain that. You said a 600 and how much? You mean in the valuation? Or mm -hmm. you said in loss? Well, I, loss is not really the, <laughs> the, the best way to think about it. It's if we were going to be getting $100 of revenue off of the revaluation, now we're going to, now we'd be getting $90. So, so it's, I guess I'm at, my question is, County has shared information with you that they have reduced mm -hmm. somebody's appeal. Mm -hmm. They reduced it by, mm -hmm. and it came in at six hundred something thousand dollars for for the evaluation of the property in Town Mills River. It's it's the revenue that we would get off of those valuations. That much of value, not that much tax, but that right. much land value evaluation. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's, that's all right. I was done with that slide. Okay. Um, so the next thing that, that we're actively working on right now is what's called a revenue neutral calculation. You've heard me talk about this a little bit. Um, each time that there is a uh, revaluation completed, each authority or each jurisdiction needs to present a revenue neutral calculation. And there are three steps for that. And I'll just read these for the benefit of those who um, might be curious is the first thing you do is determine a rate that you would produce revenues equal to those produced for the current fiscal year. So if we brought in $1,000 in revenue off of our tax rate for this year and the value goes up, what's that rate need to go down to to equal $1,000 for the current year? And then, the, then you increase the rate by a growth factor equal to the average annual percentage increase in the tax base due to improvements since the last general evaluation. Now that is what you would see each year um, through new home construction and renovations, remodels, people buying new boats or what have you, it's all coming into the town. And then you adjust the rate for any annexations or de-annexations, mergers or similar events, which we don't, we don't have any of those. Um, <clears throat> our annual growth factor, in, in case you're curious, since the last cycle um, has been, 6.95%. So in other words, each year the tax base has gone up on average 6.95%. So one of the things that we need to look at in terms of our revenue neutral rate, which would eventually translate into the rate that you decide to set for your, your budget, is you have to publish the revenue neutral rate. You don't have to adopt that rate. Uh, most people, most jurisdictions don't ad adopt that rate. Um, one thing to consider is the impact to the sales tax calculation. As Sue has been working with the Department of Revenue uh, to, to basically produce numbers that we can look at as best as available data will allow. Um, a portion of our sales tax that we receive is generated based off of our tax rate. So if that goes up or down, it would increase the collections up or down accordingly. We're working through that formula to try to give you some idea of what that would actually mean. It's not a significant number, but it is, it is worth considering. Um, and the last point I'll make on that is that all that's currently under review. We're working on that right now. Um, one of the variables in that is the tax rate that the 
county is going to set for the Mills River Fire District. Uh, right now, that's 11 cents. The town's rate is 8 cents for a total of 19 cents. Um, depending upon, it doesn't affect our rate, um, the town's rate per se, if they go up or down, but the net revenue neutral number would reflect um, if they go up or down um, what the overall value would be, would be. So instead of it being 19 cents, it would be something less than that. <clears throat> I know it's a lot of detail and a lot of tax information, but I just wanted to give you that quick sort of summary update of where things stand. Any questions on that at this point? You said it goes up 6.9% every year. So is that included or excluded the 41% that it went this year? Oh, that number, that growth number is from the last revaluation to this year. If you look at each year combined and then average those. Um, between so th between the evaluations. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like three or four years ago when they did it, that 6.9 has been the increase. In between the yes. four or three years and then <clears throat> starts over. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Yeah. So in case you're wondering, it, it, the first year following the last reval, which was done in 2019, for the 2020 billing cycle was it went up by 6.71%, then 7.24%, then 6.91%. So you average those and you get 6.95% for the last three cycles. If I know it's too early to give me a number, but if if it was uh, budget season, what do you think the increase to the town potentially would be? at that 41 percent have you just run that number the increase in revenues from that or is it gonna uh, it's gonna affect the sales tax mm -hmm. we really don't know how that's gonna affect either correct well the sales tax is, is based on in part the town's tax rate total the total tax rate i've not done the math on that 41 percent okay um, <laughs> I don't want to offer a number don't yeah, okay, but I, I I could I could have some rough numbers by tomorrow. Okay. That's fine. So would it would the the tax rate include the fire department whenever the sales tax uh calculation is done? Mm -hmm. That includes the fire department's mm -hmm. eleven cents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the town's rate. That's right. So do you have any idea? You said a minute ago, how many outstanding appeals are left? In the town of Mills River. As of as of February twenty eighth, there were sixty left. And you got to understand, Randy, that some of these will get way more confusing and not as easy to get through as probably the first seventy two. Yeah, seventy two could have simply been something as just um, misprinted number or mm -hmm. a digit slid over or something. I've talked to them out there. Some people, you know, as soon as they see it, they yep, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That was that mistake. Uh, so seventy two is equal six hundred and thirty thousand dollars, forty five thousand, and a re reduction of the rate or the valuations in the town mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think sixty more. It's not going to be was going to be would equal that or would it, you? I wouldn't say it won't equal that because it depends on the, the size yeah. of those appeals. Right. For, for example, mean, we're just trying to get in the ballpark. And right. Talk about it. Absolutely. Yep. So we're looking at maybe a million and a half at the outside the the evaluation of the Mill River. I really don't don't want to answer that because, <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain why. In 2019, there was an appeal that was filed by a large manufacturer in town. And their value was $16 million was the appraised value of the land. And they appealed they appealed that to the county and then ultimately appealed to the state board. So there's a local appeal and then it goes up to the state. Um, and due to COVID restrictions and delays, that decision wasn't rendered until May of, of 2022. And it reduced their value from $16 million to about $10 million. Um, so that was a significant impact to the town's tax base. In, in the grand scheme of things, it was not a large change, but um, yeah, that. So I don't want I don't want to venture to guess yet not a, on those not remaining a, sixty. <clears throat> All right. So Sue gave you an update on some of the numbers, and I'll just talk a little bit about what's happened since your um, since our workshop last fall. 
So for the benefit of those who, who are watching or listening, the town was originally awarded $2.3 million. Um, 145 of that has been committed and or spent with, through um, contributions to the fire department and the Mills River Farm Market. Uh, last November, we had a workshop and used, using the round numbers of 2.2 million, the council decided to earmark these in two phases. In phase one being uh, 1.1 million, uh, 100,000 to nonprofit support, half a million to land acquisition, and half a million to land preservation, uh, which remain, which there means there is a remaining balance of 1.1 million available for categorizing. And we had talked last fall about waiting to see where these nonprofit requests go and then evaluating either the end of this coming summer or early next fall, that second half of, of funding. Um, and just as a reminder, as revenue replacement, we are going to meet our deadline for having these funds spent. The original uh, deadline was having them obligated by December 31 of 2024 and spent by December 31st of 2026. As we're doing revenue replacement each month through payroll and benefits, we'll have that number reached um, by about the end of March next year. So we'll, we're ahead of schedule on that. Um, on the, the request for proposals for nonprofits, we actually published that on February 24th and we sent it directly to uh, several of the nonprofits that we have spoken to over the last several months. Merlec, for example, um, one of the community centers has re had reached out the farm market. Um, so we published it on the town's website and we we sent it to those folks directly. And then we issued a press release recently for that. Next Thursday, we're having a pre-submittal meeting. This is not something that we're requiring people to attend, but we're encouraging anyone who's interested to come and attend that meeting because it will give them the opportunity to ask us questions about the group that they represent. Uh, do they qualify? What will they have to present? Um, we don't want anyone to be wasting their time on something if the organization clearly does not qualify for these funding, for these funds. And then applications for those will be due April 3rd. <clears throat> Once we have them all in the in-house, we'll have a number of folks, and I'm, I'm hoping that a couple of you all will volunteer to be on this review committee um, to review each of the proposals and then make recommendations back to the full board at the April, your first April meeting. And again, as a reminder, this is a 90-10 match was what was discussed last year, meaning if uh, a nonprofit requests uh, $10,000, the town would cover 9,000 and the nonprofit uh, would cover that last thousand or a partner agency. You know, if they had someone that was willing to go in with them on their project, uh, they could cover that. It doesn't have to be the nonprofit specifically, but all that would be worked out in the agreement. So we have this proposal and then uh, once funding is awarded, we'll have, a, we'll have an agreement just like we would need to do when we get the grant from the state for the, for the sidewalk improvements, we'll have a grant agreement that outlines responsibilities, reimbursement schedules, those sorts of things. So that stuff is in the works. Uh, we don't have any applications pending yet, but again, I wouldn't expect them until until at least after next Thursday when we have this informational meeting. Any questions on that? Are you just giving us an overview of what we're going to discuss tomorrow, or you want is this open for discussion? This is these are just some quick updates on some things that we've talked about. Okay, so we're going to go over it again. Absolutely. Yeah, there's time to go over all this stuff in more detail tomorrow as much as you would as much as you would like. Um, this is just some things that we've kind of talked about informally the last couple of months. I just want to make sure everyone is up to speed on. So now I've I've asked Mike to come and give you some updates on some of the bigger projects. Again, I, I go to chamber events and other events on uh, representing the town and get questions about some of the, the dirt that's being moved. And so I'm gonna hand it over to Mike to run through a couple of the, the key projects um, that you, you've probably heard of and probably have seen. So Mike, please. Sure, thank you. So we've all heard of the legacy project um, that is on a 111 acre property currently divided into two parcels off of Jeffers Road, as you can see, kind of sandwiched between the farm subdivision and Hollowbrook. <clears throat> 594 Jeffers Road is the actual address. So that was approved way back in 2008 with a special use permit. They did, and I think they requested an, an extension, but they installed buildings on the front of the property for their offices. So as long as you pull a building permit and begin some type of development of the site, uh, the special use permit expiration date is basically null and void. So um, 
currently the development is proposed for 456 total dwelling units and that's split among single family detached homes attached townhomes and then apartments in the central mid-rise buildings there's four central mid-rise buildings uh, one of the conditions of the special use permit is they're all capped out at 76 feet total height the actual breakdown is there's 76 dwelling units in single family detached homes 72 dwelling units in attached townhomes, 228 apartment units in the central buildings, and then 80 skilled nursing and assisted living units in the central buildings. Um, we did receive the zoning permit application for phase one. They're gonna be developing it in two phases. So the first phase will include two of the central buildings, so half of them, and then basically about half of the uh, dwellings that are not in the central buildings. So that zoning permit was submitted November 28th of last year. Staff did a review and sent uh, a preliminary review memo because there were a number of details missing from the plans. The special, special use permit from 08 has a number of conditions and basically <clears throat> looking through all that, there was some information that was still needed. Um, so again, staff uh, review memo went out December 8th of last year and we've been awaiting revised plans since then. I did want to call out one of the conditions of the permit, uh, especially with the height of the buildings and the size of the site and the development is that Mills River Fire and Rescue have an opportunity to review those plans with us. Um, I'm going to be waiting for the more detailed plans to come in um, before involving the chief in that process. So we're still waiting on that one. Uh, you can go to the next one. So the Mills River townhomes is what they're calling them on Jeffress Road. It's a 37 acre property. Uh, address is 2253 Jeffress Road. That's, this was approved with a special use permit March 24th of last year, and it's 148 dwelling units in total among attached townhomes. Um, they are a single family look and scale, so they're not, it's not apartment buildings, they're basically single family homes, but they're attached two to four to one building. Uh, the zoning permit application for that was submitted in August of last year. Staff sent the review in September, and then we got revised plans back in November. As you remember, there were a couple conditions as part of this special use permit as well, so made sure all those were addressed. And then they sent back revised plans that were compliant with everything, and we issued the zoning permit in November 16th of 22. And then as I've been updating you, construction and site work started in January of this year. Um, they've begun more fill dirt operations. All the sediment erosion controls are in place. And so that's one, again, we're going to be keeping an eye on uh, just to keep up with the development of the site. Uh, with all the construction activity, I'll just say again, and for any of the public listening, if you have issues with congestion or management of uh, construction vehicles on Jeffress Road, please just give our office a call and we have a straight line to the developer and he's assured me he'll take care of any issues. So our newest brewery in town, so <clears throat> Appalachian Mountain Brewery at 46 North Mills River Road. So this was the renovation of an existing 2,500 square foot building. And then they did a 900 square foot addition at the rear of the building so they could have a full kitchen and a walk-in cooler so they could have full food service. Um, the zoning permit for that was issued June 29th of last year. Um, I've, I've just heard they're gonna open later this spring, might be in the next month. Um, I haven't received an update from them. Um, but the staff did do the final zoning inspection. The CO was released, and I think they're just doing final finishes. Um, they did just apply for their ABC permit as well, so that's something they're they're still working through. And then recently, we've been getting a lot of calls. What's going on next to the fire department? <clears throat> so at 5260 Boylston Highway on a 12 and a half acre site, we have uh, B and F Ceramics. They are a flooring and tile wholesaler importer distributor uh, based out of Virginia. This is going to be a total of 112,500 square foot building and it's broken up into a couple different sections. So a little under 70,000 square feet of it is going to be for BNF ceramics themselves and that's where they're going to have their warehousing distribution wholesale operations. Um, there's That's also going to include a, a retail showroom and some office space as well. Then they have, and it's it, it will look like one building, but it's broken up into a couple uh, different 
uh, spaces inside. So one of them is a 22,500 square foot spec warehouse space in the same building. Then they have a 15,500 uh, 15, square foot spec warehouse space as well. And then a 7,000 square foot uh, Boylston Highway facing retail space. And then a few other projects I just wanted to run through, um, again, just to illustrate kind of the development that's going on. <clears throat> we have the Party Outpatient Surgery Center that you all have seen. Um, that's received its CO. That's 15,000 square feet. There's a commercial remodel of a 17,500 square foot building in site on Old Fanning Bridge Road for a future vehicle dealership. Uh, all about plumbing on Old Haywood Road is doing a site expansion in a new 6,000 square foot building at the back of their site. Mills River Self Storage is adding uh, some additional storage buildings to their existing central and northern sites and then is, uh, has submitted a zoning permit and the variance is coming toward the Board of Adjustment next week for their new south facility uh, near the county line. Um, and that new facility is proposing about 43,000 square feet of self storage buildings. We have James River Equipment, which to my knowledge has not broken ground yet. Um, on the old Fanning or Fanning Bridge extension, sorry, Fanning Fields extension. That's a 30,000 square foot building and then 15,000 square foot uh, building as well, new commercial site equipment dealer. We have Thorsland Concrete renovating the old Moore Dairy Farm property. There's a 6,000 square foot building going in there uh, and then they're renovating the existing structures. Summit Storage is completing the build out of four additional self storage buildings at the rear of their property at Old Haywood and Boylston Highway. Um, I don't know if anyone's driven past Br uh, Brickyard Road, but a Coney Bell, the tiny home park, has uh, about finished their phase three build out of 20 additional tiny home spaces. And I think they're just starting to move units on there. Obviously, there was the Asheville Airport air traffic control tower and radar facility, the town permitted. We've had a number of cell tower co-locations and upgrading of equipment over the last year. Um, I just received the zoning permit today. Hills Machinery is adding a fourth building to their site on Old Haywood Road. And then also in the last year, we had a 120,000 square foot building, uh, warehousing building in Broadpoint, uh, right at the corner of Old Fanning Bridge and uh, Broadpoint Drive. Zips Car Wash is coming to Ingalls. And then just a quick thing on subdivisions. It's been a little slower just because where we are um, with a couple subdivisions, we're kind of in between. Um, but we have the cottages at Roper Farm, or I think it's called the reserves at Roper Farm on Banner Farm Road. That's 32 houses. And then across the street, the reserves at Wintercrest, which is eight, so about 40 new houses on Banner Farm Road. Those are not built out yet. Um, and then Mills River Crossing Phase 3, which has been building out, that's the south side of Boylston Highway. Over the last year, that's 45 total houses. <clears throat> and then construction continues on new homes in the farm at Mills River. So again, next to where the legacy is going to be, uh, there's about 70 total lots there. I don't have an estimate of how many are built out, but there's a good five plus homes under construction there at all time. And then briefly, uh, just wanted to cover permit numbers. So right now we're on track uh, with last year uh, where we were in early March, um, but really the last two years we've been just over 200 permits total uh, in the year. And I would expect we'd probably uh, reach that again this year. And then code enforcement. So obviously uh, before we had the planning technician position, code enforcement was not gonna, was being addressed basically haphazardly as staff time permitted, which allow, did not allow for proper case management. So I just wanted to report since January, since we've hired the new planning technician, uh, we've received 11 complaints and we now have the, the SmartGov uh, portal online. So citizens can now go online to submit complaints and we have been receiving them um, as well as submitting permits online. And we've been receiving those as well. So 11 complaints since January, we've done 19 code enforcement letters, we've closed seven cases and done 43 unique site visits. That's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from Malcolm? Okay. Michael, when they come in and pull a permit for a building, you know, zoning permit, they don't really give you a um, price value like we have to put on at the county level, do they? Or That's correct. Okay. Anything else? 
Are you interested in seeing those numbers? Would I like to see those numbers? Mm -hmm. it, I don't know. It might be interesting. I don't know if that was something that we could potentially another way of tracking growth and it would just be, but those numbers could be flawed though, you know. I did the I did a similar thing in my last position for that very reason. We we just have people fill out estimated project value and it it's not gonna be as accurate as your building permits. Right. Um, but it would give you some idea of what's happening in the town. Yeah. Um, well, that would be a bad idea. We'll look at the soft Marco software and see if we can figure out how to plug it in. Okay. Any other questions that you guys get in the public generally about development or code enforcement that we did not go over today that you'd like answered? Well, naturally, with code enforcement now, I get a lot of phone calls wanting me to see if I can get some pressure off of them. But <laughs> as you well know, how many times have I called? Zero. I told them that it was implemented for a reason and they could work through it. And we was uh, still the town of Mills River and we would work with them any way we could. But these uh, policies and procedures and ordinances was put in place for a reason to protect all. And we finally got somebody to help us enforce those. And I'll just echo that. I mean, we, and I've taught Kevin this as well, our new planning technician, we're not out to find people. We're not out to get people. Um, as long as someone is making a reasonable effort to comply or showing effort to clean up their property, whatever the violation may be, we're going to give you an extension. But if you're not, we do have to follow the rules, right. just like everyone. I, I potentially see a need maybe for some elderly folks that might get hit at some point. I would like to see if council would entertain, you know, somehow setting aside some money to help those that's in a situation that can't help themselves mm -hmm. with these items like cleanup, trash removal or such or if there's any groups or, you know, that might be willing to help them out. Uh, I've actually took on one little project myself just because, not naming no name. <clears throat> Anybody else got anything? It's, uh... Okay. That is all I had to pl had planned to discuss this evening. We have more we can go through if you want. We've been mm -hmm. here for a couple hours now. Mm -hmm. um, or we can come back in the morning and pick up. You, you tell me what you want to do. Do you feel like, uh, does the group feel like we'll be here four hours, three hours, six hours? What do you what do you feel like we'll be tomorrow? I'm just asking. And I'll give you a legitimate reason. I done ask Daniel. I projected we'd be out of here by three or before just because I got to go pay my employees and a couple of subcontractors tomorrow about five. That's the only reason I ask. I anticipate going through our, at least the uh, items that we had on our agenda by noon. Okay. And then just leave the afternoon open for a brainstorming discussion, questions, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, but it could go quicker or longer. <clears throat> My suggestion to council is if you've got any any of those brainstorming questions that you think might be coming tomorrow, if you could open up with them tonight in case there's information that needs to be collected that they may could get before the time arises tomorrow afternoon. I don't have anything that I know of. So I did have one thing, Daniel. Uh, we decided back in November to set aside $500,000 of our ARPA funds mm -hmm. for farm preservation. So mm -hmm. I would like for us to at least discuss for a few minutes about setting up a uh, a committee to think about what that's going to look like mm -hmm. so they can bring it to council uh, 
because there's going to have to be guidelines on that money mm-hmm. if we if we use a third party for that purpose. Uh, they're going to have to know what we expect from that money. Uh, so I'd like, you know, and I'm just thinking out loud, maybe we could set up a, a committee to meet four or five times. I don't know that it would take that many times. I'd like to see at least two council members and, and probably two from the Ag Committee and maybe two from the plan Board uh, and maybe uh, an at-large uh, person to be on that committee to give uh, guidance to how we might spend that money. Yeah. Or at least guidance for rules to bring to this board so we can implement them. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Anything else? Mm-hmm. If that's all, I would entertain a motion to, if we need to be, to reconvene tomorrow at nine o'clock for the same meeting. That's it. Recess. Okay. Um. One thing I might ask y'all to look at is the work session for May 15th. I won't be available that week. And if that's it, well, you need that in a motion to recess it till tomorrow, correct? It needs to be a motion to recess um, till 9 a.m. Uh, March 10th. I'll make the motion that we recess tomorrow until 9 a.m. March 10th. Thank you, Randy. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, I, I, Any opposed? We'll be back here in the morning.